Hey guys, hello third grade, I hope you're doing fine. Now, I emailed you guys and a couple of you got back to me and I just wanna say, I hope everyone's doing fine and let's continue with our park and play lot design. Now, here's the tough part guys. I don't know if you guys have the necessary supplies. So you know that we, well, so Miss Niemeyer's class, shout out to Miss Niemeyer's 334. You guys were doing a great job creating your cylinders. I'm so sorry, your cones, I'm so sorry. Uh, your rectangular prisms and your cylinders. And these of course are what we use to make our trees. So the kids were making cones and then cylinders to look like trees. They were making rectangular prisms to look like buildings. And we were also we were also wadding up, wrinkling the pieces of paper or making them into a ball to wad up the piece of paper, wads of paper. And then we would glue that to our cylinders and make them look like trees. And it was a little, it was a little more than this. And of course, you guys remember that we would then of course cut the cylinder at the top and at the bottom. We would then spread out the cylinder because we would then slide our cone into the top of it and spread out or splay the bottom of the cylinder. And then this is what we would glue to the green construction paper or the grass. And that's how we ended up with our cone trees or our pine, uh, our pine trees, I should say, something that looks like a Christmas tree or a Douglas fir. But here's where we're at, guys. I don't know if everyone has what you'll need. And by that, I mean to continue with the cones, the cylinders, and the rectangular prisms, you're gonna need scissors, paper, and glue. I don't know if you guys have that. So my suggestion, or at least for now, and by that I mean, once you guys start um, communicating with me, letting me know uh, through email, via email, whether you have the scissors or glue and glue and paper, um, because we, we would need some uh, green construction paper, brown, but no worries, guys. Here's my suggestion. So, for my third graders, we're still going to go with our parks, with our play lots. But here's the thing. We're going to now have to use paper. And for Miss, oh, excuse me guys, I'm sorry. For Miss Petzinger's kids, um, you haven't reached, you haven't gotten to this point because we were still working on our geometric to our organic, learning how to draw things from nature using geometric shapes. And many of you did a great job with that. Uh, shout out to Selena Figueroa, Figueroa Ruiz, excuse me. Uh, shout out to uh, uh, Jatsidi and uh, Janet Duran. You guys were doing an amazing job. But, uh, and also uh, my guy, Josiah, Josiah, good job. So let's move on to this. Now, we're going to need to understand three things. We're going to need to understand something called the foreground. That is, of course, the front. Four is another way of saying the front. For example, your forearm, it's the front of your arm, or the front, four. And then we need the mid ground. And of course, that's just another way of saying the middle. And then we need the back ground. That's just another way of saying we need the back. That's what you need to understand right now, guys. Front, middle, back. Now, why is that important? Well, because for our park and play lot design, you're gonna design a park. And because I'm not sure of, um, of the fact that you may have what you need, and by that, of course, we need to make our cones, our rectangular prisms, and of course, our cylinders. And because I'm not sure whether you have the supplies to do that, I'm hoping that everyone at least has paper and the pencil. And that's a good start. And once you guys let me know how many of you have the supplies needed, then maybe we can actually start to design our actual, and what do I mean by that? Well, guys, for example, we were creating cones using our paper. We would glue it. We would trim it to look really nice, really cone-like. And then we would place our cone on top of our cylinder. And our cylinder was basically the tree or the tree trunk itself, the tall part of the tree. And again, we would place our cone 
up top or on top of that. And then we would have our Douglas fir or our uh, pine trees. So that's what we would do. And the rectangular prisms, which weren't terribly difficult, but we needed um, templates. And at times we needed, of course, scissors and glue. And I'm not sure if you guys have all of that. So that's why I'm suggesting that we go with the foreground, midground, and background. And once I have an idea of how many of you guys actually have the paper for the cylinders and the cones, then we can start there. Or more to the point, we can revisit. Miss Niemeyer's kids can revisit the cones, cylinders, and rectangular prisms. But we're going to start here. Now, as I was saying earlier, guys, I need to understand the front, F for front or foreground, M for mid or middle, middle ground, mid ground, front, middle, and back. Now, what does that mean? Well, guys, let's go back to our part. So what you guys are gonna have to do, so Pet Singers kids, you guys are going to start with the list, or should I say lists, two lists. One, what do you see in a park? What do you see in a park? Wait a minute, Mr. Ruiz. What I've actually, excuse me, what I've actually seen in a park? Yes, what do you see in a park? And then your list two, or list number two will be comprised of, or made up, I'm sorry guys, it's gonna be made up of what you want. That's the most important thing here, kids, or the most important uh, word here. Okay, guys, what do you want to see in a park? Okay, guys, that's a very important question, guys. That's very important. Question two, more so in my opinion than question one. Question one is, what do you see in a park? And question two, guys, this is very important, guys. What do you want to see in a park? Well, what do you mean, Mr. Is what I want to see in a park? Well, I think what would be cool, guys, or very interesting, I should say, guys, is maybe a slide, because, of course, that's going to be in our first list. But how about a volcano slide? What about something that looks like a dinosaur? Maybe, uh, so let's say this, let's say um, jungle, jungle gyms, okay, or a jungle gym, okay? Now, how about we make it look like a dinosaur? But let's not get ahead of ourselves, guys, okay? Let's take it one step at a time. So your list, what do I see in a park? What do I want to see in a park? And we'll take it from there. Now, let's say that you already have a good idea of what your list will be made up of, what, what, what the list will be comprised of, or what the list will be made up of. Will and Teo, I should say, guys. Now, let's go back to this, because I'm pretty sure everyone should have paper and pencil. So, as I said earlier, front, middle, back. Now, what do you mean front, Mr. Ruiz? So, the front is going to be the largest part of the drawing, or you're going to focus. On, so, I mentioned earlier. So, guys, how about in, um, we're going to place so F for front. Front. How about I place my volcano slide? here and of course it's at the front so it's going to be larger so that's the trick here guys something that is in the foreground is larger than what's in the middle and back because again it just means that something that's closer to you appears to be larger something that's farther away from you appears to be smaller so that's what we're doing guys so I'm just gonna go on ahead and draw a conical volcano and of course a conical volcano means that it looks like a cone a kind of a volcano, a volcano that looks like a cone. So let me go back to my volcano, guys. And I'm just gonna, I'm just drawing here the lava. And of course, you guys know that when the, when a volcano erupts, it's of course, it, um, it erupts and that of course, it pours lava out of its crater or the opening, the top of the crater, I should say, guys. Okay, so here I have, here I just have something very simple, guys. Now, what do I mean by simple? Well, as you can see, guys, it's just something that looks like a volcano. But now, guys, as I said earlier, how about if we take this a step further and make this some sort of slide? 
So, I can make it look like a volcano slide, guys. Okay, and imagine all the steps you would have to walk up to get to this awesome tall. I mean, it may be a little hazardous, guys, <laughs> but I think it would be a good thing or more to the point. And we're using our imagination, guys, okay? Don't worry so much. Don't say to yourself, but Mr. Ruiz, can this really exist? I mean, we do have to be practical. Now, what do I mean by practical, guys? Does it make sense? Can we actually have a slide that looks like a volcano in our park? Why not? I don't see why not. I don't see why we couldn't have that, guys. Why couldn't we have that? Why couldn't we have a slide that looks like a volcano with a lot of steps to get to the top? Why couldn't we have that? Why couldn't we? Why couldn't we? Now, let's go back. And, of course, we're going to need some handrails over here, guys. So that I don't want to fall safety first. Let's put our handrails over here, guys. Okay. Okay, don't worry so much about the steps. We can make them look like rungs or the steps on the ladder, or we can always make them look more like steps by using this geometric pattern. Okay? But I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I don't want to make it seem too complex, okay, guys? So we'll just take it from there. We'll just take it from there. Okay, I can make it look more like steps if I so chose to, guys, okay? But again... Let's take it easy at first, then. I'm happy with my volcano as it is. Now, that's the front. And you see how the front is going to look larger than the middle. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Rose, what do you mean larger? So, most parks, many parks, they may have a pond, guys. And this is a pretty big pond. But because we want foreground, middle ground, and background, this pond is going to look smaller than it actually is. Okay, and all of these trees were planted the same year. They were all planted as seedlings or maybe one-year-old trees. And in some cases, the trees may be up to five or six years, guys, okay? So here we have our tree. And then, of course, you can have paths, guys. Okay, paths that'll lead to the volcano. Paths here around, because be careful, let's be careful. So we're going to place a path here. Okay, and then maybe a path that leads to something over here. Now, what do I mean by something over here, guys? I think that your park should have a kiosk or a little booth where they sell healthy snacks. Okay, guys? And don't worry so much about making it look like a real kiosk or booth. Remember, we're taking it easy at first. We're not going to focus so much on making it look three-dimensional. But let's say you did. So, well, let's make sure that the top of our cano oh, more, looks more oval. Then you can add color later, guys, okay, to make it look like lava. And we're going to use a warm color scheme. Of course, you know that warm colors are colors that are associated with things that really are warm in nature, that are truly warm. For example, the sun, lava, molten iron or steel. And, of course, that means that it's going to be yellow, orange, and red. And then you can make it look more like actual volcano or rough and stone or, or, or um, uh, rock-like, of course, by adding some curved lines here, guys, okay? So we have our volcano, our conical. It looks like a cone, our conical volcano. Again, it looks like a cone, okay? And we have our little kiosk. And here, we're going to have, of course, snacks and healthy ones at that, guys, okay? But let's say we want to put another kiosk here. And let's say, Mr. Ruiz, how about a, how about somewhere where they sell snacks that aren't so healthy? Okay, so I'm going to start off with the rectangle. And I want three legs, guys. I call it the table leg method. And you guys are smart enough to understand what I mean by that. So I make it look like a table, guys. Look, it looks like a table that someone just knocked over. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what's going on here? So it looks like a table that's knocked over. Again, I drew a rectangle. And then I added some angled lines. And then I start to close them off, guys. So now it looks more like a rectangle. And, of course, you can always add a roof. You can always add the roof, guys, if you want to make it look more like a house or a, a small shack 
or a shed. But again, we just want some healthy snacks and maybe some snacks that are not so healthy. So how about this? How about we make this maybe the bathroom and here we have our kiosk or our shack that has some not so healthy snacks because every now and then we have to we have to feed that, that sweet tooth of ours, right guys? So these buildings, let's say they're all the same size. Let's just say that guys, okay? I want you to understand one thing. These buildings are all the same size. I want you to think of it that way, okay? So here we'll have the men's room. Well, actually I shouldn't say that, right? Because this one looks a little larger than so. Let me just lengthen this guys. And there we have that. So now let's pretend here we have our men's room and we have our ladies room here, okay guys? So let's pretend again that these are all the same size. Now I add, now I say that because I want you to understand one thing. Well, why are these smaller, Mr. Ruiz? If you're telling me that they're all the same size, why does this building appear to be smaller? Well, guys, because they're farther away. Again, the closer something is, the larger it appears to be. But the farther something is, the smaller it now appears to be. So let's go back to this. So I have my slide, guys. I'm just having a little bit of fun, maybe making it look more like a slide, maybe a few more details here and there, okay? So I have my slide, my volcano slide. I have my healthy uh, snack, shed, or kiosk, and we can draw some paths that lead to it, paths that lead away from it, okay? So now, let's go back. Let me make this a little bit winding, okay? Thicker here, smaller there. Okay, guys, so there we go, guys, okay. Now, if I want to place something like, ooh, how about this, guys? I want to place a dinosaur, something that looks like a dry dinosaur and maybe even a pirate ship. So, guys, what am I doing? Well, number one, we have to understand what a dinosaur looks like. And if we understand that, then we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. We know that a dinosaur, for the most part, is huge. Well, it depends, of course, on the dinosaur. But let's say this is something like a T-Rex, okay? So we know that it's huge, guys, okay? So here's our T-Rex back here. And then we're going to have, let's go with something that looks like a pirate ship, okay, guys? And what did I start this off with? Well, I started it off with the diagonal line, guys. And I'm going to curve these two lines, okay? I'm going to curve these two lines. And then I hope to get something that looks like a pirate ship, guys. And let's add... Maybe our, our mast, I believe it's called. The large poles, guys, where the sails are tethered to or tied to, guys. Okay. So we have our ship. We have our dinosaur. Now, again, the farther something is, the larger it appears to be. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I meant to say that in reverse. So the smaller it is, is due to the fact that it's farther away. Now let's 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 extend this, okay? So this is the front. This will be the middle, and then now this will be the back. So let's continue with this, okay? So maybe over here, maybe over here, guys, we have the lake front, we have the beach, okay? I'm gonna place my sun up here to my upper right. Okay, so now let me continue with this. Maybe there's a path that leads from the lakefront to this path here that connects with the path to the volcano slide and a path over here to our pond, guys. Okay, so now I have an overall idea of where the back is, where the middle is, and where the front is. Again, front, middle, and back. Okay, so now what am I doing, guys? Let me go back to my pirate ship. So let's place the ship near the lake. And again, guys, because it's farther away, I'm drawing it much smaller. Why? Because again, the farther something is, the smaller it appears to be. The smaller it appears to be. But it's still big. It just so happens that it's far away, guys, okay? That's what's happening here, okay? It's just far away. That's all that's happening here, guys. So I wanna make it look like a big park where you can have lots of things like, for example, a volcano slide, uh, restrooms, healthy snacks, and of course, let's not forget trees, 
we need a nice amount of green space, open area where there's fresh air, trees, of course, grass. And again, these trees are gonna look smaller. Why, guys? Why are these trees much smaller? Because they're farther away. And we'll save that cone. Maybe we can do something with it later, okay? We won't erase it just yet, okay? Because maybe, oh, how about this? Maybe we can make it look like an iceberg. Oh, just to begin, we're just having fun here, guys, okay? We're just having fun. And you can always go back to your list, check your list, say, hey, wait a minute, Mr. Lewis, it's not on my list. That's okay. You can always remove it or add it. So now we have something that looks like a iceberg and it can wind around. There's a pathway that winds around it, guys. And you can make your way all the way to the, path, to the top of the iceberg, guys, okay? So we have our iceberg there. Okay, guys, so now we have a volcano, our restrooms, our snack. Here we have our pirate ship that we can climb onto and have a little bit of fun in there. Pretend that we're pirate ships, or pirates, I'm sorry, pirates on the ship, I should say. So maybe another path over here, guys, okay? And see how it's, as the closer it is to the lake, the smaller it appears to be, guys, okay? And then this path can wind around. Okay, so we have plenty of pads, a lot of green area we can enjoy. Okay, guys, and of course here we have our pond, okay? Maybe you can add some curved lines or ovals to make it look more like water. And then again, so let's go back to the smaller area or the background, guys, okay? So what do I want to do here, guys? So what do we have? We have a volcano slide, we have our iceberg, we have our pirate ship. May oh, I'm forgetting this guy over here so let me move this guy over here and how about over here in this empty area so how about something that looks like a dinosaur guys and it's okay to draw from memory if you don't have a picture of a dinosaur but maybe you have something like a dinosaur book hanging around somewhere so you might want to just take a look at that so you have a better idea of how to go about drawing a dinosaur guys okay because again we want to make our drawing as representational as possible of course you guys out there remember what that means representational means of course that you just make it look like that thing as it appears in nature so if it's a dinosaur then we want of course our dinosaur to look like an actual dinosaur okay guys and then maybe we have another slide back here so we have our tree we have our dinosaur slide, we have our volcano slide, our iceberg, our pirate ship. So I want you to have fun with this. And again, what are we doing? We're focusing on something called the foreground, front, the middle, and the back. And again, guys, if we're gonna have our volcano slide over here, guys. And whatever you wanna focus on, if it's the the healthy snack kiosks or booths, then so so be it. Or maybe you want to focus on something like a slide. Then you have it here, guys, okay? You have it here, guys. So no worries, guys. We're going to do fine. And if you want to make these steps look more like steps, like actual uh, uh, something that you can actually climb or more to the point like actual steps, well, then you just need these jagged lines, guys, okay? And I'm drawing a line, horizontal line. Okay, guys? And then our steps begin to look more like actual steps. Okay, but you don't have to focus on that. Again, you can make it maybe you want to place something here that looks just like a regular uh, ladder or rung on a ladder. I don't know if that's good for safety, actually. That wouldn't be a good idea for safety. But again, this is our imagination and this is how create this is how designers start out they uh it's, they have a storyboard or more to the point they have drawings and they say well that might work and that may not work and so they make sense of everything using their drawings and their brains and their education guys like you draw like you guys are going to do so we have our volcano slide guys we have our volcano slide okay and then over here um towards the middle we had our restrooms and again guys we just want to make sure that we start off with rectangles if that's what you choose if you choose to add it but if not it's okay too 
Okay, and then I'm adding my angled lines, my table leg method. It looks like someone knocked over a table. And then we close these off. So I have something that looks like a rectangular prism. And you can take it a step further by adding the roof. Now, what am I doing, guys? I'm just adding a triangle. And then it looks a little longer, distorted, because of the view, because of the way we're looking at this. So let me draw my roof shingles or shingles there. So we have our, and I believe we placed our healthy snack kiosk or booth here, guys. Okay. So what do I do? Angled lines, guys. And our snack booths, guys. And over here, I believe we had our pond towards the middle. They look smaller because it's towards the middle. And over here by the lake front, excuse me guys, over here by the lake, our pirate ship looks small, but we know that a pirate ship is really huge. But why did I draw it smaller, guys? Because it's farther away, Mr. Ruiz. We can make our drawing uh, look as if it's three-dimensional or it entails space, that there's space to it because we have a front, a middle, and a background. Okay, guys, so that's your first task. Good job, guys.